So in today's session, first, what we are going to do is we are going to start with content library. So what is a content library? So within recruiting and candidate experience, one task is what we call it as the recruiting content library. And this content library is very crucial. The reason being that, you know, this library basically contains and, you know, a variety of, uh, you know, uh, text-based contents. Okay? So all the contents which we normally use in across, you know, the different places of uh, the hiring module, we create those contents in the content library. So some examples of the content library are basically like, you know, your uh, requisition related contents, like, you know, your posting descriptions or employer descriptions and, you know, uh, any notifications we send to the candidates and any static content which we have to display in the content, you know, in the career sites. And then most importantly, all your job offers. So we use, uh, we send job offers to the candidates, right? Those offers, offer letter templates, we use normally store it in the content library. So there are a lot of, you know, categories uh, which we have in the content library. We'll see them in detail. So basically, by default, uh, you know, only the recruiting administrator role, they have access to all these tasks. Basically, once they come to set up and maintenance, this recruiting and candidate experience, not only this, like uh, just... All these four tasks, right, will will be, uh, you know, only the recruiting administrators will have access to it. And the recruiters or the hiring managers, they will not have access to this particular task. So now that, you know, we talked about content library, let us go inside the content library and see, like, you know, what, you know, what kind of categories we have. So once we come into the content library, you will see, you know, various kind of contents here. Okay? And this is in standard feature in most of the recruiting screens as well. So once you come inside any page, you will see the data basically. Okay? But if you wanted to filter the data, or if you wanted to sort the data, or so fine tune, you know, your results, what you see, then you can click on search filters, I mean, show filters. And once you click on show filters, you will see the different filter parameters here. And then, here, if you notice in the first filter parameter, which we have is visibility. What is, uh, you know, and the values which we see is internal and external. What do we mean by internal and external? Uh, any idea this one? Yeah, I guess it's related to internal and external candidates. Like if we filter it out uh, using internal, then all the message templates related to internal candidates will get displayed. Exactly, that's very true. So. As you rightly said, you know, whenever, wherever we see, like, you know, internal, external, that means these are like, you know, uh, the, here we are referring to the candidates. Okay? So there are certain contents, you know, which we can create only for the external, only for the internal candidates. So if you wanted to filter accordingly, we can able to see. Next we have is the status. And in the status, like, you know, we have like, you know, five different kind of status here. So the first one, which is draft. So we all know what is a draft. Draft is something which we have created and which we have not activated, but still in the, uh, you know, in the system. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the draft contents can be activated at any given point of time. Okay? And, and also this is one, another common functionality across the recruiting module that, you know, any content which is in draft mode can be deleted. Okay? Once we activate the content and then, you know, then we do, we will not have an option to delete it. Okay? It, it not only implies only to the recruiting module, even across the fusion application. Okay? There are a lot of you know, data which cannot be deleted once you create it. For example, you take positions. Okay? Once a position is created, you cannot delete the position. Once you create a legal employer, you cannot delete a legal employer. Once you create a business unit or department, job, positions, you know, all those components, once you create it, you cannot delete it. Okay? And the most important, you know, stakeholders in the entire application is like, you know, the employees. Once you create an employee record, you cannot delete the employee record. At, at least from our side, you know, we cannot able to delete. But let's say if you have created a, you know, good amount of data, uh, employee data by mistake, and you wanted to delete those data, then, you know, uh, one last option which we have is like, you know, reaching out to Oracle support. So we can reach out to Oracle support and we can request them to, you know, delete so-and-so candidates and then they can do it from the back end. They can do it from their side, but that requires, you know, a big process. Like, you know, there are a lot and lot of, you know, approvals, uh, 
has to be obtained from our side, customer side, and then you know, Oracle, they will review it and then based on the business justification, they may or may not proceed with the deletion of that person. And so now coming back to the recruiting module, right? So as I said, any objects which is in draft mode, which is in draft status can be deleted, whether it could be content library or your selection process or job application to anything, you know, you once it is activated, we cannot delete it. Next status, which we have is current. So what do current means? Current means that, you know, the object is currently active. So you see all these objects that, right? you know, we can see a green mark here. That means that, you know, these are active. And then one good thing intuition is, right, you know, you have this help text. What do we mean by help text? Whenever you hover and, you know, your mouse on top of any object, right, you will see an help text like this. And then here, like, you know, you have another help, you know, uh, help test, which is like, you know, preview version content. If you wanted to preview what is there in this version, uh, in this content, right, you can just click on it and then you can see a preview of it here itself. You don't need to go and save the object each and every time. So this is what the current uh, means, like, you know, the object is currently active. Next, you have future. What is future? Future is like, you know, if you, when you create an object with a future data, then you will see this, you know, uh, status as future. Let's say I'm creating an object, but I, you know, the customer says, you know, Harish, I want this object to be available only from, you know, first of March. But, you know, what we normally do is we, you know, if we have those kind of scenarios, right, we normally create those, you know, upfront. We don't create it only on first of March. We create it upfront and then we keep the active date. Uh, you know, the activate the date to activate this particular object would be first of March. So those objects, those objects right, will have the status future. And then you would see ended. So what does ended means? Uh, you know, this, if there is an object which is end dated or like you know, a new version has been created, then you will see the status as ended. So if I just take any one of this object, so inside this, you know, inside this object, I can have different contents. I mean, different versions. You see, these are all the old versions. And then if I just see you, if you see the status here, right? I just saw. So when you see this icon, that means this is ended. And the same icon, you know, this arrow is from right to left, right? If you see an arrow, which is left to right, then that, that indicates that, you know, this is in future uh, status. And then instead of red, uh, you know, this mixed orange color, right? you know, you will see something in green color. We'll see that also example. We'll create a future data object and see how it looks like. So this is how, you know, the end uh, ended means. Like, you know, whenever a new version is created, then the old version gets ended. And then last, which we have is the include inactive content items. What is inactive content item? See, basically this is an object. If this object is made inactive, then you know you this those will be displayed here you know, uh, by default. Okay? So if you have if you select this object, that's when it gets defaulted. So that's the purpose of this inactive content data. And these are the different statuses we have. Next, coming to the categories, you see these are the different kind of categories we have. All these are like, you know, different categories. Each category serves a different purpose. Okay. For example, if I just scroll down, we have a category here called employer description. So what does employer, uh, you know, when do we use this employer description? When we are creating a requisition. Okay. And then if you wanted to, you know, give an employer description. In the requisitions, right? You know, uh, once we come, um, once we post the, rec once we, you know, create the requisitions, we haven't, stage called which we call it as job formatting in that you know we can add employer descriptions if you wanted to say something about our employer which is outside the posting description then we can use this employer description section to create the contents which has to be displayed accordingly and then if i just scroll down yeah so the next very commonly used is like another posting description so what do, what do, where do we use this posting description? We use it in the while creating the requisitions or after creating the requisitions also, we have a section called posting description. So, you know, what happens whenever the recruiters are creating the requisition, you know, if they have like, you know, a good amount of, you know, standard uh, posting descriptions, right? Then they, what they do is they normally, you know, create them as a posting description so that they don't need to type uh, each and every time. 
they'll just choose this posting description from a list of values and then they can start using it. So that's posting description. Yeah. So are these templates are user defined or uh, pre built provided by our actual? Uh, most of these contents are like you know user defined that means like you know uh, there will be no content okay but there are certain things like you know, certain categories where you will see some uh you know uh standard uh ones for example right you know you have this change candidate email confirmation okay? mm -hmm. whenever a candidate is changing the email confirmation right then these are all like you know oracle standard okay so this comes as an out of the box, like, you know, uh, as a standard from Oracle, seeded data, we can call them as. And then let's say if I just go to interviews, interview schedule notification. These are all like, you know, the seeded ones. These standard templates will be by default active, right? Uh, yes, all the standard templates would be by default active. If you want to disable it, do we have a flexibility to do that? Yes, yes, you have. For example, this template, it's an Oracle seeded one. Okay? And if I don't want this particular template, okay, mm -hmm. then you can just, you know, click on uh, edit content. I have an option to make this as a method. Because on the top of this, we can create the new version to disable the old one. We can we can do that as well. We can create a new version. Let me just confirm. We should be having an option to make this as a method. Okay, sure. You will see something like, you know, deactivate content icon. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'll just check, like, you know, why it is not coming up for the internet. Yeah, sure. Maybe I think that since there is only one content item here, right? It is not allowing this. But once we create, uh, let me just. I think this contents uh, cannot be deactivated, but let me also just confirm that. Okay, sure. So normally what I do is as part of our Excel file, uh, the place where we maintain all the dates and the courses, right? So mm -hmm. here I have a sheet called points to check. So whenever we have any uh, questions, right, you know, which we could not able to, which I could not able to address during the session, I normally make a note of those questions here so that, you know, I can just refer it back and then, you know, uh, I can you know, update you in the next upcoming sessions. Yeah, yeah it, uh, that's great. Right. One thing is that you know not all questions you know can be addressed at the same time. Sometimes that would be some okay. technical issues. Right? So it normally happens just to make sure we don't miss out those questions, right? You know, I'm having an Excel file to track all those changes. Okay. So I'll just check and get back to you on that. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, Harish, no problem. So this is about you know the content, uh, you know the introduction to content like that. Next, we what we have is like you know in the content library we will see how to create a content from scratch. Okay, and before that, yeah, we were talking about the categories. So here you will see you know a lot of different categories here. 
Okay. And if you ask me, are Harish, are we going to see all the categories now? No, it's not like that. We cannot see all the categories now. So what we will do is like, you know, we'll be keep coming back to this content library, you know, then and then. For example, when we talk about requisitions, we'll come back to the content library. When we talk about candidate selection process, we will be coming back to this content library. So against each topics, there is a separate categories in the content library. So we'll be coming up. For example, when we go to the offer, when we start with offers, we will come and see like, you know, how all this, you know, uh, categories works. Mm -hmm. And then when we go to the interviews, then, you know, we'll talk about all this interview related. And then when we talk about selection process and, and the candidate notifications, then we'll come and look at those content libraries. So we'll, we'll be visiting this content library very frequently. So now coming to, you know, creation of content items in the content library. What That's one question here. Yes, These yes. categories must be pre-built, right? Standard. We cannot create yes. the new user-defined categories if we want. That is very true. Okay. Yeah, you can proceed. 